Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. I want to talk to you today about transhumanism and the anointing. From the embryo to destiny. Dr. James Hughes is executive director of the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies and teaches at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. He's the author of Citizen Cyborg, Why Democratic Societies Must Respond to the Redesigned Human of the Future. His work is really a humanist manifesto for transhumanist values. Dr. Hughes belongs to an emerging group of academics, sociologists, and bioethicists who support large-scale genetic and neurological engineering of ourselves. A new chapter, if you will, in evolution, and the result of accelerating developments in the field of genomics, stem cell research, genetic enhancement, germline engineering, neuropharmacology, artificial intelligence, robotics, pattern recognition technologies, and nanotechnology. At the intersection of science and religion, which has begun to question what it means to be human. Many biotech experts predict that human enhancement may be initiated starting with 2013. In 2007, National Geographic magazine proffered a guess that within 10 years, the first human non-humans would be operative upon planet Earth. San Diego State University professor who is now retired and computer scientist Werner Venge gave his presentation The Coming Technological Singularity at Vision 21 Symposium sponsored by the NASA Lewis Research Center and the Ohio Aerospace Institute in 1993. He said recently that we are approaching the era when questions like what is the meaning of life will be nothing more than an engineering question. Nick Bostrom, Oxford philosophy professor and co-founder of the World Transhumanism Association, writes that posthumans will realize eternal youth and health, gain complete control over their minds and emotions, and experience novel states of consciousness that present human minds cannot imagine. He says that posthumans may even choose to discard their bodies in favor of life as information patterns on vast, superfast computer networks. Not surprisingly, the USA government, via the National Institute of Health, recently granted Case Law School in Cleveland $773,000, that's money appropriated from USA taxpayers, to develop guidelines that will be used for establishing government policy with respect to the next phase of human evolution, genetic enhancement. Also a key player in the arena is the area of transgenics. Transgenics allow scientists to develop organisms that express a novel trait not normally found in the species, including the human species. For example, a type of rice known as golden rice has elevated levels of vitamin A. Scientists have also developed sunflowers that are resistant to mildew and cotton that resist insect damage. Possible transgenic combinations can be broken down generally into three categories. Plant-animal-human combinations, animal-animal combinations, and animal-human combinations. Towards the side of normalcy, question mark, for medical reasons, we now have the three people, one baby consultation, where two embryos are fertilized with sperm, creating an embryo from the intended parents and another embryo from the donors. By the way, I have placed footnotes in the show notes of the podcast and reference link to what we've been discussing. Recently, while preparing a session on stem cell research for the University of Excellence in the course module New Ideas in Science, I was meditating on God's calling of the prophet Jeremiah while he was in the womb of his mother. In the Tanakh, the Hebrew Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah tells us, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Notice four things that God told Jeremiah. I formed you in the belly. I knew you before I formed you in the belly. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. The Hebrew word used for formed is the word yatsar, and it has the meaning to mold into a form as a potter or to fashion. 
Psalm 139, 16 tells us, Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in your book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I once heard a medical doctor say that substance yet being unperfect, with all my members being in continuance fashioned, when as yet there was none of them, was the best description he had ever heard on the formation of the life in the womb. Check a concordance and you will find there are many references in the Holy Bible where God says, I formed the life in the womb. In addition, the beautiful truth is that God knows the life in the womb intimately before he forms it. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, the Hebrew word for new is the primitive root form yada, and it means to be acquainted with closely, as a man knows his wife intimately. My friend, all lives are unique, but in the life of spatial servants of God, there is a setting apart, a sanctification for a particular destiny, such as in Jeremiah's life. And it is the same with all who have experienced the new birth through Mashiach Yeshua, Messiah Jesus. There are no unimportant people in God's kingdom and no trivial jobs, only superhumans for super destinies, designed by and anointed for a creator from beyond time and space. If you have exercised your free will to repent of sin and receive the Mashiach as your Lord, the anointing of God will guide you as the coordinates of X, your obedience, and Y, God's will for your life. It is at these points, at the coordinates of your obedience and God's will for your life, that God's anointing will guide you. Throughout life, there are decisions we have to make, obedience to the will of God that we need to determine. And as you flow into this obedience, my friend, in these last days, the last days of planet Earth, you will experience the greatest blessings you've ever known in life. The power, the anointing, the love, and the miracles of God will begin to flow through you and bless you and those around you and ultimately the nations of the world to the Jew first and also the Goyim, the Gentiles. Now I want to give you a prophecy. Soon, some are already living now, 144,000 Jewish prophets will arrive on the arena of Israel-centric international geopolitics. They have been called for such a time as this to guide the remnant of the house of Israel, believing Jews, to a knowledge of their Mashiach. These 144,000 Jewish prophets will dominate the media and cyberspace, both legally and illegally in the public marketplace, in governmental and business concourses, and underground. No one can stop them until they are finished. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.